Hello my loves and welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I'm going to be going through my very own personal statement with medicine and dentistry applications around the corner. I've had so many requests to go through this and my top tips for the application process. I actually did manage to get all four of my offers from Birmingham, Bristol, Nottingham and Leicester Medical School. So I must be doing something right and I wanted to share all of my tips with you to help you out so if you do like the sound of today's video make sure to give it a big thumbs up and if you haven't already subscribed what are you doing make sure you click that little button now for all things medicine uni lifestyle there's just something for everyone here on this channel and it would mean the world if you stuck around and subscribed but before i crack on and read my statement to you all i have a few very important generic tips and first of all i know how overwhelming the personal statement writing process can be it is a very important big part of your application and it can seem so daunting to know where to start but what i would say is watch a few videos like this get some inspiration and understand what a personal statement needs to have in it and then get yourself in a very calm headspace and go to your favorite spot and just brainstorm everything that you want to get down this is your opportunity to showcase how amazing you are and show these universities why you deserve a place at medical school or dentistry school as I know you all do and it really does just need to come from the heart it is called a personal statement for a reason and you want to get across your point of view make it original to you then I would say don't try and do it all in one go for me anyway it just works better if I just get down as much as I can in that first session until I'm lost for inspiration and then leave it a little bit and come back to it when you're feeling inspired again you don't want to have to force this out it needs to be something that comes naturally and finally the last very generic one is when you do have some sort of draft make sure to send it out to a few different people to get their opinion Opinions, whether that's your favorite teacher your parents any doctors that you know that would read it for you just to get a few different opinions and see what they think of it so you can get enough of people's input and also please please get them to check the grammar as well popping it through something through Grammarly is really important but then that can sometimes are miss things too and having people what proofread it just make sure you haven't made any silly mistakes because universities absolutely hate that but equally don't send it off to loads and loads of people because everyone going to have very different opinions and I got to the point where I sent it to so many different people and I was getting completely conflicting views on the first paragraph some people loved it some people hated it and I just had to go with what I wanted so I'd say sending it to two three or four is a good amount any more than that and you're just going to get way too many different opinions and be a bit confused about what to include. So I have this here literally printed off of the UCAS website and I have not read this properly in about three years. So I hope you enjoy it going through this as much as I'm going to enjoy it. It's gonna be very cringy, but it is really about selling yourselves. So please bear with me, a little bit of cringe is always a good thing. So let's start with the all important introduction. Doctors play a fundamental role within society. Whilst working as a volunteer in a slum in India, I witnessed the incredible work of medical professionals. Seeing the monumental impact they had was inspiring. I returned home with a new perspective on life and knew that I wanted to be part of this rewarding vocation. So for me, Percy, my time volunteering in India was a huge reason why I decided to go into medicine and I really wanted to start my personal statement explaining this experience and how it impacted my life. And that is one of the most important things in the introduction is to answer the question, why medicine? But not in a very generic, non-inspiring way like I want to help people because because these people reading the personal statements will have read that a thousand times and they're going to be going through so many other personal statements that you want yours to stand out and start with something really catchy that is going to want them to read the rest of your personal statement. Next we're going to go into the main body of the personal statement and this is what's going to include your work experience, your volunteer, your job, your buzzwords and we're just going to pull it apart now and I'm just going to tell you all the important bits to include. I arranged work experience at several GP surgeries where I learned the importance of communication. Words are a crucial tool used to put patients at their ease. Doctors must relay information in a sensitive and simple manner. I gained a broader perspective of the variation between each surgery. 
Every demographic brings with it a different challenge and doctors must tailor their skills to benefit the individual. To gain a broader understanding of the NHS, I undertook several hospital placements. At Birmingham Children's Hospital, I appreciated the immense pressure and challenges placed upon doctors and the emotional resilience needed when patients' lives are in your hands. The true importance of teamwork struck me. Behind every doctor is a body comprising of many different medical professionals. To ensure our healthcare system is efficient from primary to tertiary care, everyone must work as an integrated unit. To start with, I spoke about my work experience and what I did to understand the medical profession, which is a really important part of your personal statement. And it's also so important not to just write a list of all the things you've done. Instead, what you wanna do is say what you've done, say what you saw from it, and then also what you learned from this experience and how it is relevant to medicine. It's so important to really show that you have reflected on your time. And also two buzzwords which are so important are communication and also the multidisciplinary team, which is like the team behind the doctors, are things that medical schools really look for because the GMC come up with a list of things that they want from future doctors and being able to work in a team and communication are two very important things that you wanna show that you can do and that you've really tried to understand. Weekly, I volunteer at the National Center of Riding for the Disabled Association. I've witnessed the challenges faced by those who manage complex conditions and disorders. I gain immense satisfaction from helping them, and I built a strong relationship with a teenage girl struggling with severe autism. Initially, she had extreme difficulty communicating with me, but gradually became more confident. Today, she will say hello and often express her enjoyment of each session, to the delight of everyone. I learned how contributing to someone's day, even in the most marginal way, can make a significant difference. So again, with my volunteer work, I've used the same structure of explaining what I did, what I saw, and what it taught me and drawing this back to a skill that's going to be really important as a medical student and as a doctor. Then we go on to the final little bit in this paragraph, which is my job. Waitressing this year has shown me that I work efficiently under pressure and has developed my communication skills. I thoroughly enjoy engaging with the general public. Every person is different and you encounter many social backgrounds. It has taught me the importance of a smile and positive attitude, even when exhausted from a long evening shift. Enthusiasm not only lifts the mood of the team, but also that of your customers. And again, I'm not just saying what I did, I'm really drawing on what it taught me because these really are things I did that showed me a lot about my character and taught me about why I wanna go into the medical profession. And I really want that to come across in my personal statement. Then we go on to my next paragraph, which is all about things I did outside of my main academic studies. So things like research projects, extracurricular activities, different awards that I got, Oh. And this is a really important paragraph because medical schools are looking for a really well-rounded person. They don't just go for people with the top grades. They wanna see that you can manage your time well and you're not gonna completely lose your mind during medical school because it is a really tough degree. But they wanna see that you're gonna be able to balance that with doing different societies, really contributing to university, and ultimately be able to have some sort of work-life balance and still enjoy your life whilst you are a doctor. So let's see how I do on this. I am naturally inquisitive and was curious how people can be so different when 99.9% .9 of our genetics are the same. This led me to research whether mental health was predominantly governed by nature or nurture as part of an independent project. I discovered how neurotransmitters play a vital part in determining who we are. I also undertook a Gold Crest Award at the University of Nottingham, organising a residential placement week with Professor Hardy on her research project for Unilever. It was fascinating to see firsthand how biofilms of microorganisms can have a detrimental effect on human health. Throughout sixth form, I led a charity enterprise group which raised over £1,250 for young minds. Through this role, I learned effective leadership skills. I work well in a team and am able to bring out the best in people. I achieved Duke of Edinburgh Gold Award, demonstrating my determination and perseverance. I've consistently proved I can manage my time effectively. During sixth form, I was a school and house prefect, part of the social committee, a librarian, and a member of the school hockey team. Outside of school, I continue to enjoy horse riding, playing the piano, and art. This year, I've waitressed, volunteered, traveled, and gained work experience. This is only all possible due to 
my thorough organization skills. Now, as someone who really doesn't like bigging themselves up, this does to me come across as a little bit braggy and it's very weird to be reading. However, that is literally what personal statements need to feel like because you've got to think every single person applying is going to be selling themselves as the best version they possibly can. And the last thing you want to do is sell yourself short because you're not bigging yourself up. You've got to think you are amazing and you have the skills needed to be a doctor. You've just got to get it down on paper and you've got to get it into the word count. That's one thing I've not mentioned. Every single sentence matters. The word count on personal statements is very short and you have a very small amount of words to get down everything you need. I remember going through so many times and looking at each sentence individually and thinking, can this sentence be condensed? Is this completely relevant to my application and why I'm going to be a good doctor? So now we're going to go on to the last little paragraph, which is my conclusion. And this again, it needs to be something really strong, snappy, rememberable, and summarizes exactly why you want to do medicine and the skills that you have to make you deserve that place. Through my gap year, I've matured, developed, and reflected on the key attributes needed to be part of this profession. I've gained an immense appreciation of the increasing demands and responsibilities faced as a doctor. I am certain with my dedicated and enthusiastic nature, I will thrive in this dynamic vocation and I am excited for the lifelong challenges ahead. So again, we've ended with another buzzword, which is lifelong. They literally love the phrase lifelong learning, lifelong challenges, because medicine really is a lifelong career. You're gonna have to do exams forever, you're going to have to make commitments for a very long time and they want to see that you've really understood and thought about this. And then also in your conclusion, I think it's so important to summarise some of your key characters and skills. So for me, that is my dedication and enthusiasm and they're two key characteristics that I pride myself in. And then also I chose to talk about it in my conclusion, but also throughout my personal statement is that I thought about the fact that medicine is not all unicorns and fairies. It is a very challenging career with some huge problems and challenges in the NHS and they want to see that you thought about the bad side of medicine too. Yes, it is an amazing, rewarding career, but also it can be very emotionally a tolling, huge responsibility to take on the health of patients and ultimately one of the most precious things is people's lives and that is one day going to be under your control and they want to see that you've really thought about the huge impact of this decision and choosing to study medicine and go down this vocation. Ah, so we made it to the end of my personal statement. That is what I applied with. Before you go anywhere though, I'm just going to give you a few really important tips for the application process itself and where to apply, which can be as important, if not more important than your personal statement. So first of all, be really clever about what universities you choose to go to. They all have slightly different application requirements and depending on your predicted grades and also your UCAS or BMAT score, make sure you pick universities that you have a good chance of getting an offer at. If you have a low UCAS, some universities literally put UCAS as one of their top requirements. Some universities give you different points depending on different things that you have for your application. So be very strategic and think about what universities you have the best chance of getting into that way. Then make sure you apply to one medical school as a slight backup or slightly easier option to get into. You can see this by the number of offers to applicant ratio, which is on websites like the Medic Portal, which is amazing to strategically look at which universities you're going to apply to. And again, your one that you apply to that is not medicine because you can only apply four times on UCAS and you have to apply to a different course, be happy with this option and something that you would consider going to else it's just a waste to even bother putting it on UCAS. And finally, when you do get that exciting interview offer come through, which I can do a whole updated interview tips video. If you do want to see that, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and also a comment below that you would like that. But make sure you do reread your personal statement because the interviewer can ask you any questions from this and anything you included you genuinely need to know about. Say you've included a science article that you've read or you've included your research project, go back and thoroughly understand that. So any questions that come up to do with your personal statement are not going to catch you up. So that is everything. As always, any questions or anything I missed, pop them in the comments below and I will get straight back to you. Good luck with your applications. I know you're all going to do amazing and also 
Do not forget the deadline and make sure it is squiggled in a huge red marker on your diary and make sure everything is sorted by then because the last thing you wanna do is forget the deadline with all of your hard work. But I know you're gonna do the best job and I'll see you all so soon with my next video, everyone. Bye.